football against Alabama and what um, beyond that why do you think y'all might have had some uh, trouble running the ball lately? Um, it's very important to run the ball against them you know it controls the clock kind of spaces out too so we get a pass game going where we don't have to just depend on that um, yeah, there's just a lot of things. We have a lot of young backs, some old, young O-line guys. So we're kind of just figuring it out, you know, making sure we're getting the right holes, hitting the right people, kind of lining up and everything. How big was the bye week then coming before Bama so you guys can share up some of those issues before the number one team comes to town? Yeah, bye week is a big deal. Uh, we got a lot of good practice the whole time, a lot of ones versus ones, you know, kind of getting ready for the looks that we're going to see against Alabama as they run lots of the same stuff we run. So we kind of practice against each other most of the week. But it got us a lot of good film and got a lot of good looks. Think you're uh, ironed out some of those wrinkles as far as the running game thing? Yes, yes. I think we're starting to figure out how close we are from being a top team and how we keep making little mistakes every week and that we just need to fix them. It all comes back down to practice. And this bye week, Coach Fisher, you know, he made an emphasis that we need to start focusing on the mental game so we like eliminate those little mistakes we're having so we can fix them. Maybe if that's uh, blocking somebody or like line up properly, that's kind of what we're missing. By we helped us do that. What what drills or exercises did y'all do to help kind of hone in the mental game? Um, just you know, just different kind of stuff. We practiced tempo a lot. You know, we went a lot of tempo periods, like a lot of full speed stuff, kind of getting us in shape too. Um, we did a lot more blocking drills. You know, with using the tight ends also, as well with the running backs. So a lot of different stuff like that. Did you practice any new things? Any new plays? Any new sets? Any Anything mm, different? Nothing, nothing new. Just kind of honing in on like what we've been coached. But kind of this week gave us a lot more. We could practice our fundamentals again because we got to do it in bye week. I mean, uh, in fall camp, and once the season kind of started, you kind of start like doing less and less fundamentals because you have to practice for the week and prepare for that right. for what the the future defenses are going to have. So this week gave us a lot to go back and kind of hone in on this. Kelvin. Kellen was saying that he thinks this offense really performs well better when you guys are moving quickly. Do you, do you think the same way then? Is that, mm -hmm. that? I believe that. I think that we're a good tempo team. I think that everyone has a lot of good hustle. I think Coach Schmidt has put us in a athletically like in shape wise to do this offense. I think it just helps everybody just moving fast and kind of keeps everybody on their feet, especially the defenses because we can move fast and get to the ball a lot faster than they get lined up. You're so, kind of surprised the run game's been off such a slow <clears throat> start. You know, five, five games in, you're still searching to find your, your, your niche, so to speak. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're still searching, but we're again like we're right there. We just need to fix a couple of different things. It's a normal Bama defense. Normal Bama defense. What what will make them tick this year? And I like a Quinn and Williams in the middle, but I'm sure they still got dudes up front, don't they? Yeah, they're Alabama. You know, they're going to be a good team. You know, we face good teams every it's the SEC. You're going to see the good D line every single week. If there's going to be someone like Arkansas that has a good D line and they had a great front. You know, we play against Clemson. They had a great front. We're going to play against a lot more good teams. So Alabama is just kind of the next step. And so just getting better. We talked about the schedule all year. You guys had two chances against top ten teams so far, haven't been able to pull out the win. How big would a win against as Bama do for you guys mentally? Do you guys approach the rest of the SEC season? Mm, every win's just a win itself, you know, but uh, being a top team is gonna be a big deal. Especially not a lot of people get to say they face the number one team. We get to say we get the we get to face the number one team twice. And it's two different teams and that's a big deal, kinda giving us an opportunity. To be able to do that, you know, Alabama's a great team. We're a great team, so it's just whoever wants in the middle. What was your biggest takeaway in the big games that you've played so far in the Auburn and Clemson losses? What, what was your biggest takeaway, and what, how do you apply that on Saturday when another top team comes in here? Uh, biggest takeaway, I think, well, fourth quarter. We play very well in the fourth quarter. I think we're in really good shape compared to other teams because that's when we kind of start – we just need to start earlier because in the fourth quarter, we just start catching up to people when if we had a smaller gap or like if we were playing like that the whole time, that uh, we could have won, if not like a lot smaller margin. You talk about the mental game. I, I know there's a lot of drills and stuff you do on the field. Has there been a, an increase in, in the use of like sports psychology and stuff with the team, with, with Jimbo and, and his staff? In, and, and what does that kind of look like for you as players? Uh, yes, there is some psychologists that we do. We have uh, Dr. Pissinger. Pissinger. I forget how to pronounce his name, Pittsinger, Pittsinger. But he does that with all the teams, and not just football, kind of everybody. They have another psychologist that some players, they let you talk to them and stuff like that, kind of just help you on the mental side. You know, it's a lot with handling everything in school and football, so it helps a lot. How much does that helps you, working with that helps you focus in on, on the fundamentals and actual kind of in-game um, preparation? Mm, it helps a lot, just kind of just knowing where you need to focus at. You know, that's kind of a big thing. 
there's a lot of things going around, a lot of moving parts, and just being able to focus on the game and every play. It's kind of knocking off the bat, like a bad play or a good play, and just going to the next. How has the communication improved, Carson, between the tackles and the O line and the tight end in the blocking game? Oh, it's improved a lot. Uh, we're all starting, and that's the whole thing too. Is that you know there was a lot of young guys at tight end that didn't get to play last year, freshmen like Weir Meyer, and uh, there was a lot of calls they didn't know that were like what they meant for us and like you know so. But this week we got to kind of learn each other's calls and really got to communicate a lot more. We did a lot of trade drills, which is tight ends and tackles the whole time. So we got to practice our blocking schemes a lot more. When Weidermeyer's on the field, a lot of times you're you're in between two freshmen a mm -hmm. lot of times. But what's that been like and how have you seen it progress between Green and Weidermeyer? Oh, they're both great athletes, but they're really smart, both of them. You know, Green, he's uh, he communicates really well on the field. You know, because in loud games, you really need to be able to communicate with the guards to the tackles because the center, you might not be able to hear him every time. Green does a good job. And Weidermeyer, he does a good job of seeing stuff, kind of helping me because sometimes you can't see all the way out there when you got a tight end next to you and the use of DNs like in the seven, kind of blocking your vision. <clears throat> and then, uh, but he does a good job communicating. He does a good job listening to like, maybe he won't see something. I've kind of, I know lot, all the calls, so I can help him out too at the same time. But he does a good job just asking questions on the field and knowing like, so we know the snap count, everybody's on the same page. How many, not how many points, you know you got to score boatloads of points Saturday because mm -hmm. what's coming in here on the other side, what's your confidence you can put up 35, 40 points and do what's needed on Saturday. I'm confident. I'm confident every game, you know. We we practice, we practice, if we, and if we play the way we practice, we should beat them. You know, it's it just comes down to who wants it more. Alabama has a great offense, you know, they score a lot of points, you know, so we need to score a lot of points too, and it's just going to come down to who's going to do it. Is that, do you put more pressure on yourself, Carson? Is that the right word, or is it just like, hey, we know we probably need points on this drive. I mean, how do you approach that knowing you're facing another, another dynamic offense on the other side? Uh, you just need every drive is important. You know, you're only going to get, like Coach Fisher says, you're only going to get 10, 12 drives. So if somebody's making a mistake on one play every drive, that's a whole drive there. And then you're only left with maybe three drives. We can't have that. We need to be perfect almost every drive and just scoring. We need to put points on the board. The biggest thing is not having turnovers. What about the Reds?